For getting a clearer picture of how the pandemic has taken a toll on children's health, new research shows that obesity rates are on the rise. According to the CDC, kids between two and 19 years old gained weight nearly twice as fast during the pandemic compared to before the pandemic. Joining us now is Benus Kalami, clinical dietitian with Stanford Children's Health. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. First, can you tell us how much obesity rates have increased lately? This is definitely a relevant question given that it's National Nutrition Month and rates of obesity in children have risen substantially from 16% pre-pandemic in 2019 to about 22% in August 2020, according to the CDC. Of those hit the hardest were children ages 5 to 11 years old. And what's important to note is that many researchers and health professionals attribute this to increased stress, financial hardship, food insecurity, and lack of safe play areas for children. And in medical terms, how do you define obesity? How is it diagnosed? And what's considered normal and what's considered overweight? It's certainly a loaded question. So in medical terms, obesity is defined by your body mass index. It's also known as the BMI. And this is a calculation that considers your weight in proportion to your height. For children, when the BMI is equal to or greater than the 95th percentile, that means that a child's BMI score is greater than 95% of children their age, then that meets the criteria for the diagnosis of obesity. Uh, overweight is considered having a score between 85 to 95 percentile, and normal is having a score between the fifth and 85th percentiles. Uh, but the truth is here is that there's a wide range of healthy and acceptable body sizes, and this is a concept we call health at every size. It's also important to note that BMI is a really an imperfect tool. It doesn't account for factors like bone density and muscle mass, and it's also based off of data from European men. So it's not the most ethnicity or gender inclusive tool. And how is obesity linked to risk factors for other health problems, both in childhood and later in life? Yeah, so obesity is correlated with an increased risk of certain diseases that affect both children and adults later on, like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, heart disease, diabetes, um, and even high blood pressure, as well as worse COVID outcomes. Uh, but again, the truth is, is that it's really difficult to tease out the impacts of health disparities and inequities in these correlations, and these all play significant roles in health outcomes. What about psychological issues? What's the impact there? There is incredible stigma associated with being in a larger body, and especially for children. Children in larger bodies can face bullying at school and even fat discrimination, which can lead to feelings of shame and guilt and inevitably body image dissatisfaction. These feelings uh, can lead to harmful attempts at weight loss, like crash dieting and extreme exercise, and even lead to disordered eating and eating disorders like anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating disorder. How should parents talk to their children if they're dealing with obesity? Great question. It sounds counterintuitive, but when talking to children about obesity, take the focus off of weight and shift it more towards living a healthier lifestyle in a sustainable and fun way. This is something that I like to call healthy framing. Research shows that when weight loss is the goal, people actually wind up gaining more weight and having poor relationships with food and themselves. So instead, using healthy framing can provide a positive mindset around weight and increase the likelihood of having a healthier lifestyle that sticks. Because remember, children can be healthy across a wide range of body sizes and weights. And my final question for you, besides diet and exercise, any other tips to help your children get on track with healthy habits? Absolutely. So I think we all know that eating a nourishing diet and moving your body are essential healthy habits. I'd also add that it's important to make a mental shift, take the focus off of weight and body image and shift it toward establishing those healthy and sustainable lifestyle practices. On that note, I would also add that it's helpful to approach food with a fun-based perspective. Not everything needs to be about reading every detail on a food label or following the latest diet craze. Uh, instead, you can focus on fun food experiences like cooking in the kitchen and gardening with your kids which research shows helps establish healthier habits in the long term. And when it comes to movement, 
Model healthy movement for your children. Offer movements and activities that speak to their natural interests and get them connected with their friends. This way that they'll look forward to it and it'll be a habit and not a chore. Great, well, Dr. Venus Kalani, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Happy National Nutrition Month.